Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and I'm going to show you how to graph an absolute value and uh, two different ways uh, with uh, translations and slope changes or with the idea of using the two linear equations that really make the absolute value. Don't forget the absolute value equation has uh, the basic shape of a V. Always keep, oops, that's not very straight. Always keep the idea that the basic shape is a slope coming in at negative one and the slope coming out at positive one. So that's what we call the parent graph. I like to call that the mama graph. Okay, so if I was to do this with two lines, it would bring out this linear equation and that linear equation except with shift and a slope change. So let's see how that works. I always recommend to make the inside just the inside of the absolute value plus or minus. So y equal two parentheses the positive x minus five plus one. And as I always tell my students, when when dealing with absolute value equations, you're making two linear equations, two equations. If I was to solve for uh, say the x-intercepts, set it equal to zero, etc. That's what I would be doing here, except this one I don't think is going to have an x-intercept. We've got an up one shift, I think, is happening. All right, the negative of this one would be y equal 2, parentheses. Let's put a negative on the outside of the inside elements, the inside linear. See the inside linear there? Okay, and then plus 1. I think I'm on the screen still. I hope I am. Let's see. Uh, this equation right here, I'm going to simplify y equals 2x minus 10 plus 1. So that's y equals a slope of up 2 over 1. Always remember it's up 2 over 1, right? Oh, oops, lost a lot of there. Hang on, let me bring that back. Slope of up 2 over 1. Always say it that way. Don't just say 2. Say what the slope is. And then negative 10 add 1, so that's going to go to negative 9, the y-intercept. The y-intercept. Over here, the other equation, if I was to first distribute the negative, I always call this negative distribution. I put a name on it since students tend to forget to distribute the negative and change every single sign. What is positive? What is negative? Well, now the opposite is negative and positive. So 2 minus x plus 5. Okay, and then don't forget we got the add one. That was supposed to be a plus one over there. It's a little bit sloppy. I'm not sure if you got it on the video too. So, okay, back now to just last little steps. It's got a down two and over one, a down two and over one slope. Okay, and the y-intercept looks like it's going to be a positive 10 plus one. So let me rewrite that again. Y equals a down two and over one, a negative two x and a plus 11. So if I was to graph this, if I was to graph it, let me just grab something here real quick. Um, I need a linear, need a xy grid. I'll just bring in here real quick and shrink down. So if I was to graph this one, let me move this around real quick, um, you would find that um, you're gonna go. You're just gonna try to find the v out of it. That is the one that's for the equation. So the next goal is to find the v for the equation. Now this one's got a pretty big, deep slope here. So let me scroll down a little bit. Scroll down a little bit. Get this into view. Okay. So the first equation I'm gonna look at. The first part I'm gonna graph is. Uh, let's see. This one. This is the positive up to and over one slope crosses at negative 9, goes up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and you can see it's a sharp, very sharp moving uh, slope up 2 and over 1 compared to the mama slope over here of just up 1 and over 1. So let's get the other one. We got a positive 11, so we're going way up. The top of this grid is 10, so I'm going to go estimate a dot, tiny dot higher. Okay, and I'm going down 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 1. So I'm going to go down 2, there's 9, that, that's the 9 point, over 1. And I'm going to try to get a few points here so I can try to be as absolute sure I'm getting as close as I can. So down 2 and over 1, Does that look right? Down 2 over 1, yep. Okay, so if I bring this graph down, okay, and I've drawn it carefully, 
don't think I drew it as carefully as I could have because I don't think the intersection's just right. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. And then if you're graphing by two equations, this is the two equation method. The last part is to indicate based on how po either if the uh, absolute value is positive or negative, since there's no sign out there, that means it was a positive upward V. So then I usually tell students to basically highlight. Let's see if I can grab a quick highlighter here. And then to simply highlight the actual uh, part of the equation that's correct. So that would be in this case. Let's see if I can highlight it. Oh, I want to get a larger line here so you can see it. But I would highlight this upper V part. If I was to actually graph this by shifts and translations, shifts and translations, the way I would think about it is the mammograph. So let me show you what the mammograph would look like. The mammograph with a thin slope. So the mammograph starts here at zero. It's a little bit big here, but a little uh, here at zero, 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 and it has an up two and over. And what I say when we're graphing by translation is go over left and right, up two and over left and up to and over right and this is what you would say is the parent graph or the mama graph with a two slope you know it has a two slope because of the two in front and you understand that hopefully because of the two multiplier that comes out here also you have a two that's changed whatever the y-intercept and the add one whatever the y-intercept would have been without all that so you can see this acts like multipliers that change the y-intercept and the slope. So we're looking at a mama slope that's positive and two. So I'm thinking the slope comes right down through. Oops, see if I can draw that a little bit better. Right down through here. And then now I'm going to shift it. How will I shift it? Let's see if I can grab this guy and shift it around. Yes, I can. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift this. I always tell my students to think based on what is inside what is inside the absolute value right here inside the absolute value I always tell my students not just the idea of opposite the number negative 5 which is positive 5 always think what x value what x value will make 0 I always tell the students what x value will make 0 I sometimes tell the students what makes 0 or WMZ as a helpful reminder and then this is just the vertical shift do what it says. If it says up, move it up. Basically, all the Y numbers have been calculated, and the last thing you do is up one with them. That's really important. If this was negative, you just go down. So I'm going to take that absolute value, and I'm going to shift it. Okay, right five. Oh, see if I can grab that there. Okay, ready? Right five, one. I usually grab it right by the vertex. Let's see if I can do that. One, two, three, four, five, and up one. So you can see I must have missed the linear equation a little bit when I drew this line. I think it should have been straighter. And that's because I'm not using a very straight edge tool here. I'm trying to use this new pad I have, so I apologize for being a little bit off there. But I think that's the way that line should have gone, and then you could have seen the V would have been perfect. So I hope you understand the difference between gra gra graphing with two-line method compared to graphing with translations and slope change. I think it's important you understand both ways getting the two linear equations so that you understand how the slope changes and you're not just memorizing the formula or what the teacher is telling you to do. I'm David from Electric Teaching and I hope that I have helped. Have a nice evening.